but it is just a couple of days now before the uh, the ACC championship game. How's your team practicing, and how are they health wise, especially Trey Lamar? Yeah, uh, man, I tell you, this is truly, truly, maybe be this might have been the best Tuesday Wednesday practice we've had all year, and I'm just really uh, just kind of impressed with how the guys have come to work, uh, the leadership. You know, these guys are are. Uh, you know, focused on trying to get ready for a very tough challenge. I mean, they know what's ahead. This is a this is a really good team uh, that we're getting ready to play, as you would expect. For, you know, they're a champion just like we're a champion and and uh, playing for the overall championship. So, uh, but just good focus, good energy. You know, uh, the guys are fresh, health-wise. We're in good shape. Uh, I don't think Trey's going to quite be ready, uh, but he's he does look a lot better. I mean, he's really... Uh, he feels better. He's he's made a lot of progress. He's pretty much got all of his range of motion back, and he's just really just working on the strength now, just kind of strengthening it back up. And uh, I think they're going to cut him loose when we start bowl practice, which will be probably a week from Sunday. Um, probably our first practice, you know, subject to change. And once I kind of get everything figured out on exactly where we're going and what, what the plan is, but uh, he should be ready to start bowl practice. Coach, I heard you talking this morning about uh, you know keeping the younger guys engaged, especially the guys who are redshirting this season. Um, who are some of those guys last year or two? I imagine Cleveland Farrell two years ago, he redshirted during that national championship uh, game run. Uh, but but who are some of those guys that you know that's really yeah. paid off with in the last year? Or two? Yeah, and, and and not just guys that are redshirting, but guys that aren't playing much, like a Trey Lamar last year. You know, I mean, he, he was a guy that wasn't playing a whole lot of linebacker, but. But uh, you know he he was he was getting a heavy dose of it every day and just you know so just trying to, you know the coaches do a good job of of finding different ways to engage their players uh, and kind of meet them where they are because sometimes you get into meetings and you know you're 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 kind of up here and you got your veteran guys are up here and you're putting in a plan and you're busy and you're focused and sometimes you forget this kid down here and he's just not there yet and he's just kind of getting further and further behind so sometimes as a coach you gotta. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta go to where they are and find ways to do that. And then some of our red shirt guys, yeah, like a Klee, uh, you know, uh, Kelly Bryant is a perfect example, perfect example of how he's been prepared, uh, even when you weren't really seeing him play a whole lot, and how how he got reps at practice, uh, the game plans, the, the the tips and reminders, the tests weekly, uh, you know, getting just taking ownership of the installation. All those things build up, and uh, you know it's a young player like a Lee Anthony Williams. You know that you not nobody knows about. He's not playing right now, uh, but here's a kid that, that is getting better. A Chandler Reeves, uh, man, this kid has made a lot of progress. You know, I say that name, right? I was like, who is that? You know, I don't know who he is, but you'll know who he is. Uh, I just see, you know, how how they stay engaged. Uh, taking opportunities when we get into some of our competitive stuff to get them some reps. That, that adds up uh, over the course of, of uh, a year. Andy Staples, Sports Illustrated, said on radio earlier today that you must have a switch by the slide where you just flip it and they, that you turn into destroy everything championship mode. And he's being <laughs> a little bit funny, but does it help this time of year having a team that has been in championship mode? They know how to do it. They know how to win. Well, I just I think it I think it helps having a culture. You know uh, that that understands what it takes. You know that's really because um, your team changes every year. Uh, but but if you do a really good job and, and really nurture the culture of your program, you know that can kind of transfer. Uh, but the leadership of our team, uh, there's no question. When you've got guys that have been there and have experienced uh, big games, you know they they understand that uh, it's just kind of what we do. You know, I mean, every week is a big game. If you come to Clemson, I don't care who we play, it's going to be the biggest game of the year um, because we're Clemson. And, and you know, we've won 81 games in seven years. So, you know, that's, a, that's a lot of games. So, trust me, when we line up to play, you're going to get every opponent's best version of themselves every single week, maximum juice, maximum energy. And so, from our standpoint, our guys just understand that. And so we just, we just try to get ready every week. We don't really vary how we get ready uh, very much at all. Uh, we just try to play well and they t and try to create that pride in performance and consistency in performance. That's really what we 
what we focus on. And, and um, because of, you know, the past seven years, these guys have been in a lot of big games. And so, you know, when you've got, you try to just carry that over from year to year with the leadership of your team, because the best teams, the best teams that I've been on as a player, best team I've been on as a coach, they're, they're really player led. I mean, I just kind of got them and keep them, you know, keep them on track. And now they know very often I had to kind of kick them back on order and get them back in, in, in the line. But uh, best teams are player led. And this is a perfect example of that type of team. These guys, they get it. You had that, I think, the feeling back in the spring, a really good feeling about this group. Didn't mm -hmm. you? Yeah, yeah. Just, just the chemistry, the accountability. I, I, I told y'all this. This team, uh, it's weird to say because you're coming off a national championship game, and you know, and everybody. But, but this team had a little edge to them. Uh, had we had everybody back from that same team, I might have had to handle them a little differently. Uh, but all I did was spend all spring and all summer talking about who wasn't here. And, and like I said, there was a, we're a really talented team, but a lot of unproven guys, but guys that were recruited to come here to be good players that just really hadn't had a lot of opportunity yet. And uh, uh, so they, they had a little edge to them coming into fall camp. And I, I love that. I, I, and I did everything I could to kind of embrace that. Uh, and they, these guys have answered every challenge all year long. And, and now you're in a position, you know, you, for, thir for 13 weeks now, I mean, they've controlled their own destiny. They, they believed in themselves. They believed in what we do. Uh, they believed in each other. And um, regardless of anything else, and they've been in control of their destiny all year. And after 13 weeks, they're still there. So uh, there's really only four teams that control their destiny, you know, right now. Uh, and and uh, we're one of them, so you know we gotta we gotta put our best foot forward uh, Saturday night to try to find a way to win. Man, this is uh, this is gonna be a humdinger. Coach, I know uh, you play uh, in Pasadena. You wouldn't you wouldn't lose any sleep over that. But obviously, with the number one ranking, uh, if you're able to beat Miami and keep that, you play in, in New Orleans. Um, I imagine that's probably crossed the mind of, of number nine at, at running back. That'd be pretty cool for yeah. him to be able to play. Yeah, ET go home, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, it'd be great. That'd be great. I love it. You know, I, I, I haven't, you know, it's been 25 years since I've been to New Orleans. And uh, ironically, I got a chance to go back in, uh, I think it was April. When was that Manning Award? March or April? It was either March or April. 25 years. Last time I'd been in New Orleans was when I played. Uh, in, in, uh, and here we were. Uh, 25, you know, spring of, of 17, and I'm I'm at the Superdome. Uh, and last time I was in the Superdome, we had just won the national championship as a player, and now here I am, 25 years later, and I'm in the Superdome. We had just won the national championship at Clemson. It was kind of surreal, and uh, you know, I took a few pictures and just did a little reconnaissance trip, you know, just in case. So, you know, if we can find a way, man, I'm I'm well prepared uh, for for. Uh, a visit to New Orleans, great city, but you know, um, you know, hopefully we can find a way to win and get there. But you know, I tell you what, man, this is going to be a great year, no matter what happens Saturday night. Miami's had a great year. We've had a great year. Both teams are going to lay it on the line, and uh, I'm really proud of this team. And no matter what happens Saturday night, they ain't nothing going to change the way I feel about this group. They have done a phenomenal job of getting ready and just, just hanging in there. De you know, developing depth, guys stepping up uh, and making plays. So it's been fun. It's been fun, and, and we're going to continue to embrace it and, uh, you know, try to enjoy the moment Saturday night. How are uh, JD Davis? And JD's good. Yeah, he's good. Who was that one? Chad. Chad, he's good. They're, they're, both, they're both ready to go. Which one will. Going back to the younger guys just for a second. Um, you know, Dave... I, I, I will say this. only other one that uh, is, is – uh, it doesn't look like he's going to be able to go is Mark. He's kind of retweaked his ankle somehow and uh, just can't hardly plant uh, and cut like he wants to. So he's the only other one that that, uh, that Marcus is back and, and uh, should be good to go there. Um, Xavier Kelly got 22 snaps against uh, the Citadel um, last week. Uh, you got uh, Chris Register and, and uh, Justin Foster some time in, but um, Xavier wasn't even able to get into the game. Mm -hmm. Is he one of those guys, uh, kind of like Dorian you know, or Daniel, just a matter of time until the light bulb comes on? Just a matter of time. I'm very patient uh, that way. Just a matter of time. We just gotta, we just gotta hang in there with him, and uh, you know, just, just, just keep. 
keep pushing. Uh, sooner or later, uh, that, that it's going to all come together for him, and uh, he'll be a great player for us, no doubt.